What's up guys, our September Patreon rewards are finally available. If you're interested in picking up a full art brainstorm or Muldrotha the Gravetide, you can check out all the details at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Gate Crash. It is not, go ahead and say it, it is not one of the most exciting packs in the world, but there are still quite a number of pretty cool cards in here that I'm excited if we can get to get to pull them. Wow. I speak good, but I'm really excited to be opening this up, so we will get right into it. Of course, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one pick one scenario. Uh, and so we will go through every single card and hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick would be. Our first card here is Predator's Rapport. It's an instant for two and a green. Choose target creature you control. You gain life equal to that creature's power plus its toughness. Uh, this is very much a stall card, and you guys, if you've been around for a while, you know how I feel about stall cards. I just don't like them. Uh, I feel like they're a bit of a trap uh, because... Really, all they do is set you back maybe a turn, maybe two, or something like that, but they really don't forward your game plan of winning. They just stall you. Uh, and so, not that it's bad. There are certainly instances where if you're against a very, very aggro deck, you might want to bring this in from the sideboard, but in general, I just feel like they're not good cards. I don't think they're worth running most of the time. Even at instant speed, which is kind of nice, I just don't think it's quite enough. So, for me, definitely not a good card. Definitely not something I would want. <clears throat> Uh, contaminated ground uh, is an enchant land for one in a black you enchant the enchanted land is a swamp uh, and whenever the enchanted land becomes tapped its controller loses two life uh, this is an interesting card i don't think it's super super good to be honest uh, you can play it early and it's probably going to deal like two four maybe six damage but uh, later in the game, they'll be able to kind of play around it because they probably won't need to tap out all of their lands. So they'll just leave this one to the side. Um, it does kind of set them back a little bit, which is definitely worth noting. And I do think it's better than the Predator's Rapport, but I don't think it's a first pickable card by any means. Uh, Scorchwalker is a 5-1 for 3 and a red, and then it also features Blood Rush, which is the gruel mechanic, so it's 1 and 2 red for, uh, you discard this card and then target attacking creature gets plus 5, plus 1 until the end of the turn. Blood Rush was a really, really good aggro mechanic. What it did basically was it applied the power and toughness of, uh, a card in your hand to a creature that already is attacking, and it basically works as a combat trick and a creature, which is great. Very, very lucrative. So far, definitely the best card in the pack as well. Uh, unfortunately, as a creature, it's not great just because it dies so quickly, uh, but for that Blood Rush mechanic, it's actually very, very good. I would love to, to boost something's power by five is huge, especially on turn three. That's pretty early, so definitely a very powerful card. Definitely so far the best as well. <clears throat> Uh, Purge the Profane is a sorcery for two, a white, and a black. Target opponent discards two cards and you gain two life. This is essentially like Mind Rot, but like shifted over to the Orzhov guild uh, by draining, or not by draining, but by gaining two life. It kind of adds that white side to it. Uh, I think it's not great, to be honest. It's a little too expensive to be very good. Uh, unfortunately, turn three, Mind Rot, uh, discarding two cards, usually pretty okay. You can kind of get away with it in most sets because it kind of hits at that perfect time where discarding two cards is going to be annoying, but it might not be like game breaking. Uh, this unfortunately hits it a little bit too late, in my opinion, where they might not have two relevant cards in their hand at this point by the time you can really get to play it. So that might not be the case. Obviously, there are going to be cases where you're going to get something really, really good, and that's great. However, in general, I just don't think it's the best. Uh, it's a little bit too slow. <clears throat> uh, Shamble Shark. Uh, is a 2-1 for green and blue. Uh, it does have flash, so you can play it at any time you can play an instant, which is actually really nice. And it also features evolve, which is the Simic mechanic. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has a greater power or toughness than this creature, you put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, which it will be very easy to buff this up because of that one toughness. It's going to be pretty uh, pretty quick to, to get at least get one or two counters on it, I would imagine. Um, and if you do that, I think it's worth it. Uh, I think it's great because it features that Simic mechanic really well. 
but I don't think it's as aggressive as that Scorchwalker. Um, unfortunately, that's really what I would look for in a set like this, where you're really trying to push through as much damage on board as possible. Uh, that Blood Rush mechanic made it really, really far, uh, in my opinion. So I would tend to pick the Scorchwalker over it. However, I do like the Evolve mechanic. It's actually a very, very good one. Uh, you just have to really get a lot of like mixed power and toughness ratios to get it really off the ground. Uh, Boros Guildgate uh, is one of the 10 gates. Uh, I don't know if all 10 are in this set. It might have only been five. Uh, that would make a lot more sense. But regardless, there are two color lands in this case, Boros, so red and white. Uh, and it does enter the battlefield tapped. So these are actually really, really nice to pick up. There's a lot of cards, uh, or at least there's a cycle of cards, I should say, that care about how many gates you actually have out on the battlefield, uh, which is really, really nice. They also just help fix you, obviously, which is important. You want to be able to play all your colors, and that's really nice to be able to do that off of only one land. Uh, the downside here, of course, they do enter the battlefield tapped, and that does slow you down, so you do have to be a little bit careful, especially in Boros in particular, maybe even Rakdos. Uh, you, you really can't play too many of them because if you do, you're starting to play a turn behind every time and you're really the aggro deck. So you want to be playing on curve as much as possible. So I do like picking these up. Uh, you can usually pick them up kind of mid pack. You don't necessarily want to go too late to pick these up because they will go pretty quickly. Uh, but you know, it's not a first pick by any means. It's definitely not something you, you need right off the bat. Uh, Sky Games is an enchant land as well for one in a blue. Enchanted land has tap. Target creature gains flying until the end of the turn. Activate this ability only at a time you could play a sorcery. I don't love this card, uh, to be honest. I just think it's quite bad. It's likely it will stick around for quite a while because there's, uh, that I know of, there's not a ton of enchantment or uh, land removal that's going to be very popular and limited. Uh, and so you'll be able to give something flying every turn, which is nice for sure, but... Uh, I just don't love it. You're tapping out a mana for that, and so you're going to be a mana behind uh, every single turn, and I don't think that's worth it. Uh, it is evasive, and it's hopefully a little more aggressive, but uh, I'd rather be just playing a two-drop like creature or something like that than something like this. Uh, Corpse Blockade is a 1-4 for 2 and a black with Defender, so it cannot attack. Sacrifice another creature, and it gains Death Touch until the end of the turn. Uh, I don't love this one. Uh, unfortunately, I think Defender is quite bad, uh, just in that you can't encourage aggression with only Defenders. It's basically just a deck of walls. Uh, the fact that this can get Death Touch is kind of nice, and it's a sack outlet, which you might be able to synergize with some other cards. I don't know of any offhand, uh, but generally there's one or two in the, in the set that synergize with being sacrificed, and it's actually kind of nice to be able to do that, but I don't think this is worth it. It's just very, very slow, and it's very much a card stall. Uh, Burst of Strength is an instant for one green. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and untap it. Uh, what's nice about this is it is a combat trick. It's not a super powerful one in that you're not getting a huge boost, but the boost does stick around and it untaps the creatures. So you can really, really surprise block uh, some creature on your opponent's side of the field and only costs one green. So it's actually really efficient. Uh, it's not a huge signal by any means to leave up one green. Uh, a lot of times, as long as you play something, it doesn't look too suspicious. And then something like this can really come out of the woodwork and do some damage. However, it is just a combat trick. It's not something that I'm looking to first pick by any means for sure. If I'm in green, I would definitely consider it. Definitely the Simic deck would be the best place for something like this. <clears throat> uh, Prophetic Prism as an artifact for two of any color. When it enters the battlefield, you can draw a card and then you can tap one of any color and then tap this to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So this is very much a fixer uh, for your deck. If you're in a lot of colors, you will want this. Uh, generally, you're going to find yourself in two colors, maybe splashing a third, depending on uh, some of the things that you've opened. If you've opened really, a really bomby rare, you'll want a splashed third color. But uh, generally, this isn't necessarily a super playable card unless you find yourself in four to five colors, uh, which can happen. Absolutely. Uh, this is a multicolored uh, format. And so it's very, very easy to find yourself in more colors than you would normally find yourself in just an average like core set or regular expansion. And so if you find yourself there, this is definitely a card for you. It not only helps you draw through your deck, which is always very, very welcome, but uh, it also helps fix your mana. And that's always important for that kind of thing. <clears throat> Uh, our first uncommon is Hinder Vines. It's an instant for two and a green. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures with a no plus one plus one counters on them. 
Uh, I don't love this, uh, to be honest. Um, you're very dependent on the board state. And yes, Simic decks are where this is going to want to go because they do play around with a lot of those plus one, plus one counters. But if you don't draw the cards that have plus one, plus one counters, this is a very, <coughs> excuse me, uh, very, very dead card uh, in your hand, and it's just not going to do anything. So not only that, you also don't know what the opponent is playing. So if they're playing with 1-1 counters as well, this really is not great. It's literally just fog. And so the idea, the the dream uh, play with this is obviously you swing in with a bunch of creatures with 1-1 counters, the opponent blocks, and then what you're able to do is play this, prevent all the damage that the opponent does, and ju just deal a ton of damage on your end. But I don't think that's as likely to happen as you might think. And so in that regard, I just don't think this is a powerful one. <clears throat> uh, Killing Glare is an instant for X and a black. Destroy target creature with power X or less. I think this beats out the Scorchwalker. It's just very, very solid removal. Uh, not only that, it's at instant speed and it scales. So you can actually scale this up infinitely, technically, <coughs> for however many lands you have and deal with basically any creature you need to that can be targeted. So I actually think this is a very, very solid removal spell. Definitely one that you want. Very premium, I would say, in this set. So definitely something I'd be interested in first picking. Uh, and then our last uncommon, Incursion Specialist, is a 1-3 for 1 and a blue. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, it gets plus 2, plus 0 until the end of the turn and is also un unblockable. Uh, very, very good in a very cheap, like, blue, red, spells matters style deck. Uh, and there is one of those in here, if I'm not mistaken. There's some very powerful uh, is it cards, but I don't think that this is a very great card to first pick. Uh, it t it basically says, okay, now build around me. And you don't really want to have to build around a card right off the bat because you don't know what you're going to be able to open up. Uh, and so for that, I just think it's very, very bad. It very much pigeonholes you, and I don't like that. <clears throat> And then our rare is Mind Grind. So it's a sorcery for X, a blue, and a black. Each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals X land cards. Then that player could puts all cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard, and then X can't be zero. This is actually a very, very powerful card. So Mill is very, very good in limited because you only have to get through 40 cards versus the normal 60 in constructed. A card like this really helps dig through somebody's deck very, very quickly. Uh, and I actually like this. I think it's better than Killing Glare, Glare excuse me, to be honest. Uh, as much as Killing Glare is just super, super solid removal, uh, and you would want this in a mind grind deck, absolutely, uh, the mind grind is just super, super powerful. You're going to be able to get rid of a lot of threats off of only one card. So the value there is just way too good to pass up. So I think that's what I'd go for. Killing Glare, also very good. So I would definitely understand if somebody disagreed and said that might be the best card uh, but feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below and as always please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content but with that i'm gonna get out of here thanks so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next crack a pack episode